Hi everyone. So it is now past three thirty. So just uh, letting know, folks know that uh, it's time to come back into the room. If you're listening to this, um, for those who are uh, on, we'll just give a couple of minutes uh, for folks to come back into the room for our last session. And um, as uh, 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 folks are just coming back into the room, I will go over the housekeeping very quickly um, because we want to save as much time as possible for the activity we will have um, uh, uh, following uh, 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 all of this. So just some quick housekeeping reminders again. Um, The first reminder, actually, before I start into the reminders, could everyone put either a thumbs up or a reaction just to let me know that you are back in the room? Okay, see one heart, a couple of thumbs up. Okay. Okay, great. All right, so I'm seeing more reactions um, and people are slowly coming back into the room. Uh, as I was saying, um, welcome and thank you all so much for joining us for our very last session that's titled, What is Next? Um, so I will be going through some quick reminders again, as we spoke about the very first one being, of course, that there is simultaneous interpretation. Um, if you have any issues with that, uh, you can contact uh, the tech commander, um, Mark, um, and he will be able to help you. Um, uh, as we've done in previous session, we will still be using the and incorporating the collective note taking for this session as well. And you can choose to um, uh, 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 write notes either in the English or the French document. Um, and uh, the final reminder is that uh, we have psychosocial support um, and the psychosocial support is free of charge um, and it's uh, confidential. So uh, if at any point um, uh, you feel the need to step out or if you want support, uh, uh, please feel free to reach out. Um, all of this info uh, is being shared in the chat as well. So um, uh, you'll have that for reference. So without uh, further ado, and to kind of save us time, we only have an hour of time left for the rest of this conference. Um, uh, we will just go on to our uh, land acknowledgement activity. Um, and for that, I will be passing on the mic to my wonderful colleague, um, Leila. Hi folks, welcome back and thank you for being here at our closing. Um, so yeah, we do, oh, I always forget, my apologies, I always forget the tape. Um, so um, as we close out the conference, we want to again honor the land that we're on and have an opportunity to um, remind folks and invite folks into an active moment of recognition and honoring of the land. So I am on what is traditionally known as Jukjaki, the land um, to which traditionally custodians have been the Dani Gahaga. It has also been a land for many indigenous communities, uh, a grounding space for many indigenous communities as an island um, that has seen so, so many things over so many years. And so I like to acknowledge the land, the, the centerpiece of my life, and especially in times like the one that we're living right now, is um, building community relations, is building communications with the, uh, is building relationships with the lands that I occupy as a means, as a, as a, a source for um, the way I think about our future building, our freedom fighting, 
um, and the ways in which we build uh, almost spotlights back into what life could have been like before colonization, the ways in which our communities could have met and the ways in which those relationships, those conversations, those ways of coming together um, would have acted as active um, processes to avoid a lot of what we're living um, and seeing and the tragedies that we're experiencing right now. And so as a way to ground us um, in this moment and as a way to just kind of feel, I think for me, and my apologies, we're at the end of the day and I, I'm feeling a little <laughs> at the end of the uh, at the end of the conference. I think I'm a little bit all over the place and I think just feeling a lot of feelings. Um, I want to give folks an opportunity to follow the link in the chat if they don't know what lands they occupy and what communities have traditionally lived on that land, who um, every day fight for that land, who are fighting to find ways back to that land. Um, make sure to to find, find that out. I think there's not really any excuse today in 2023 to not be aware of the lands that we ex occupy and the communities um, that should have been able to um, build and live and grow and um, exist on. And so, yeah, I think just making sure that you have a chance or you take a moment to put that in the chat um, to acknowledge those lands. And I know a lot of the time when we give those moments, a lot of people opt out of it. Um, but I think it's just just to push ourselves a little bit further today as we close out this conference and to use um, the really, uh, the, the centerpiece of this conference, which has been action, which has been reflection, which has been intention, which has been awareness, which has been um, just really highlighting and wanting to put at the forefront the experiences of marginalized and um, affected communities. I urge, I urge everyone to just take a, a step further um, and to participate in this activity. So I'll ask everybody to close their eyes and you can put your hand on your heart, your hand on your legs, wherever it feels right. Just kind of taking a moment to ground yourself, to feel the seat under you, to feel the ground under you. And just to take a moment to take a deep breath in so taking a deep breath in and holding it and letting it out. And we'll do that again. A deep breath in. We'll hold it. And we'll let it out. So with our eyes still closed, let's take a moment to visualize ourselves on the land that made us the land that we have lived on, the land that holds our life stories, our love stories that we've gotten to play on, to dream on, to build on, that we every day get to see our loved ones on, that we get to experience. And I want you to take a moment so just visualize yourself face to face to the communities that allowed for that land to be here today and who cared for the land in a way that allowed um, the land to give you so much of what you have benefited from and that has allowed you to build such beautiful stories and experiences and histories on. And we're gonna take five minutes I think three minutes, sorry. I know that we're, we're not, we don't have a lot of time. We're gonna take three minutes and I just want you to take a moment to feel. I want you to take a moment to thank. I want you to take a moment to acknowledge. And I really want you to take a moment to just communicate through that visualization of those communities and in that way of honoring them and their lands and the land to which they have relationships to and to share a little bit of a little bit of what a little kind of like kind of a, a love letter 
that you would write either to the land and to those community or to those communities, a letter in gratitude. And so we'll take three minutes and just take this moment really to feel, to communicate and to honor. Coming back, we'll take a deep breath in. We'll hold it. And we'll let it out. And we'll do that again. A deep breath in. We'll hold it. And we'll let it out. So just... I know that that is something that a lot of the time we don't take the time to do, to just find the space to ground ourselves in the way that we honor different communities and their histories. But I think for me, I've always had an incredible love and I have had such the such a privilege to have the opportunity to work and to be in relation to communities across Turtle Island, to indigenous communities across Turtle Island. And I know that in the work that I do, in the way that I think and in the way that I work, I could not be where I am and I could not have a lot of reflections that I have without those relationships, without the ways in which I've been challenged and held and supported and cared for um, by those communities. And as someone who comes from lands, whose ancestors comes from come from lands far away, from the grasslands of Cameroon and the desert lands of Niger, I think that a lot of the time I hold for me the ways in which I would have loved to see our communities get the opportunity to meet community to community in fellowship, um, in the ways in which we dream for the future, in which we community build, in which we plant seeds into the ground and let them grow out of our children and out of our communities and out of our fights and out of the ways in which we 
love each other and we honor each other and we hold each other so central to the ways in which we think about the world and how we think about our responsibilities to the world, to each other, to the land, to so much of who and what we interact with every day. And I think that in how we're using this moment of land honoring to close out the space, I hope that we can inspire folks to continue to be to be holding Indigenous communities at the center of our work, both here and in the ways in which we work abroad, because without the knowledge, without the perspectives, without the identities, the histories, the traditions, the spiritualities of Indigenous peoples around the world, we won't get anywhere. And I always go back to a conversation that I had a while ago with some friends and with some Indigenous friends from a little all over. It, it took a lot of love and it took a lot of care to build a world that we could have for as long as we have had it and treat it so poorly as we have. And so to hold that every day, to be able to live, to work, to love, to grow, to play on this land is a privilege that we can't take lightly. And especially in how we're seeing the earth call out to us to hold a deeper responsibility to it and to be more aware of how we are in relationship to it. Thank you. Thank you, Leila, for grounding us, for bringing us back to what is important, what guides our work. Um, I'm very grateful for, for your words and your sharing. Um, okay, so in our closing session, if you're joining us for the closing session, we're going to make, I'm going to make a very strong assumption that you have joined us for at least one of our other sessions, which means you have had a chance to see our community agreements um, and our community assumptions. Because we want to save as much time for discussion, I'm just going to open the floor and go through each slide and see if there are any comments, uh, if anyone wants to contribute to changing anything. Um, so giving everyone an opportunity to do that, but moving us forward so we can go into our discussion and into the meat of what we want the session to be. So I'll take a first moment to see if there are any um, changes, comments, uh, thoughts on the first set of community agreements. I see a thumbs up. I see we're good. Okay. And um, I'll move us on to the second set of community agreements. So the second half of those the community agreements, once again, giving a moment to see if there are any points of feedback, anything you would like to change, or if everything is okay with these. Looks good to me. Moving on to our community assumptions. So these are the assumptions we're making being in this space and we're gonna carry forward within all the spaces that we share at this conference. So again, giving a moment to see if there are any responses to this, any reactions, any desires to change or edit. Nothing, okay. Uh, and on to our last set of uh, community assumptions. One more time, see if there's anything we would like to add, change, modify any reactions. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, so this last session, as Fonta was saying earlier, is really about looking forward. So we don't have a lot of time, so we just have two things. We want to have a space for reflection and reflection exercise on what's next, what's the future, what do we do after today, and how do we continue this important work? And then we'll bring back everyone to we'll bring everyone back together so that we all can can have a quick chat on what does this mean, hear what others were saying, and um for the team to be able to thank you for being here. All right. 
So I will be just giving some quick introductions for our activity. Um, the main activity for this session will be a reflection exercise. Um, and this is just to give us all a chance to think about everything that we've heard and shared through our time in the last two days. Um, there are going to be five breakout rooms and five topics related to the topics of anti-racism, decolonization, and PSCH. So as you can see, the first group will be uh, uh, on uh, uh, la francophonie and l'antiracisme, and that will be an, uh, a francophone uh, breakout group. Um, the second group is going to be on intersectionality, how to build it into all of our work as we move forward and that will be a bilingual group. The third is going to be around the realities of decolonization and anti-racism work that will be in English. Um, the fourth is going to be around resourcing and sustainability in PSEH with Shannon that will also be in English. And then the final uh, room uh, is around PSEH policy versus practice, and that is bilingual. Uh, when we say bilingual, it means that uh, your uh, moderator, um, so for my room, uh, is bilingual and can uh, take the questions or uh, responses in any language and translate as needed. Um, we will uh, we're going to try to give as much time as possible. Originally, it was 20, uh, 30 minutes, so at least 25 minutes in each of the rooms. Um, uh, you will see that uh, a Jamboard link will be shared in the chat. That is where you are, are able to share your inputs, uh, uh, written inputs as well. Um, once we are ready to start the activity, the um, uh, breakout rooms will be opened and you self-select into the room of your choice. Um, if you, for any reason, get kicked out, you can come back into the main room. Our tech commander, Mark, uh, they will be, still be in this room and so uh, we'll be able to orient you as needed or let you back into the call. Um, uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask your breakout group moderator. Um, and with that, uh, Megan, can you please open the breakout groups? Hello, if there are still people left in the main room, we welcome you to choose a chat room of your choice to join still. Uh, they're all open and waiting for you. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.
Mark, can you please put me into breakout room number three? Hi, Mark. Um, just checking in because we have a few unassigned folks. Did you want to join one of the breakout rooms? For Pat Sargent, I'd like to join number three. Okay, I'll put you in number three. Thank you. Uh, I did. Oh, I see uh, it. I see you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, I think we still have Gwen Lee. Janine and Zainab, did you want to join a room? Okay. Maybe they stepped away from their computer. Thanks, Mark. Okay. I'll go back into my room. I think Fontaine and I have nobody, but just in case.
Welcome back, everyone. I'm going to share my screen and bring us back to the main room. There we go. Welcome back. Um, I hope everyone had great discussions in their group. So we're going to have a really small moment of sharing back. Um, I'm going to ask the people that were uh, taking care of the room, so Leila, Shannon, Megan, Fonta, and I, to share a little, like one or two, one or two highlights of the discussion that you had in your group. Um, and I will start in the order of the groups. So I'll start with Megan. Merci. Euh, donc, moi, j'étais avec euh, Cassindy. Malheureusement, elle. Euh, oh, sorry, I don't know why I, I'm speaking French because our group was in French. So <laughs> I'll stop. I'll continue in English. Sorry, I'm tired. The end of the conference. Uh, yeah, so um, unfortunately, I lost my colleague that uh, I was having a great conversation with. I think some uh, Wi Fi issue at the end. But we were two in uh, our space and we got to talk a little bit about the fact that there's not a lot of resource available in French and uh, around the issue of that. And finally, we we started talking about some of their resources in their organization and some ways in which uh, we can collaborate to to create more resource in French. So honestly, we went a little bit around the subject, but it was a great conversation and a great starting point to collaborate. So, yeah. Thank you, Megan. And again, as we go through all of these, uh, for the group, to, for the all of the groups had it, um, the Jamboard and we're putting in notes. So you can always go back to the notes for the groups that you would have liked to go to, but didn't have a chance to. Um, I will skip myself and we'll go straight to Layla. Uh, can you tell us very quickly, how was your group uh, and some highlights of what was discussed? I think we had some really good conversations about what it means to be really intentional um, about this work. I think we landed a lot of where we tend to land with these conversations. There's no answers, just a lot of reflection. Um, which is really, I think was really nice to hear also still as like reflection being a tool for change, reflection being a tool for deepened understanding. Um, and so, yeah, we we had a good conversation kind of exploring the ways in which sometimes this um, both PSCH and um, anti-racism take time and sometimes where we get stuck can be frustrating, especially in the space where there aren't often a lot of answers and a lot of questions. But I think always an inspiring conversation to be in and thinking about the continued way in which we keep this topic at the center of a lot of our workplaces and are always looking to do better. Thank you, Leila. Um, Shannon, would you uh, give us really quickly a sense of what was discussed in your group um, and uh, any key takeaways from that discussion? Thanks. Um, so we actually got cut off at the end uh, where, where folks were sharing something they uh, had learned or they were taking away with them uh, from, from this awesome uh, two days. Um, but we, we kind of went a little bit around the road of sustainability and PSEAH. So we talked about reporting mechanisms and some experiences there. We talked about leadership and how to kind of bring leaders along or maybe, maybe push them a little bit. Uh, and we also talked a bit about um, yeah, just working with partners, sustained mentoring, as well as, um, you know, the need to incorporate PSEA uh, H into existing policies, practices, ways of working and that kind of thing. Um, and so I would say two uh, takeaways. Uh, one was really around um, uh, that I thought was really, really interesting was one of the last shares around like, what is the power of influence that we each have and hold? Um, so yes, we can push our leaders, we can, you know, we can push for our funders, we can push different places to take on uh, these issues 
more seriously um, and, and with resourcing, but we also have some resources on our own or spheres of influence that we hold. And so then how to really incorporate that into where we have influence, I think was one. And then the other uh, was uh, someone shared a bit about kind of really the intersections at this of this, this event, right? So um, their responsibility for gender equality and for PSEH, and then thinking about how does that anti-racism then intersect into that and how to much more intentionally uh, carry that work forward, so. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, Fanta, do you want to talk about uh, our group? Yes, so um, the last uh, 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 breakout group ended up being Barbara and I, and we uh, switched uh, it around a little bit to talk about just policy versus practice, uh, not only in PSCH, but in anti-racism work as well, um, and the difficulty in kind of translating, um, you know, the policies, the procedures, and the processes into, like, the, uh, the realities of implementation. Um, uh, and also, given that both anti-racism and PSCH, you know, there's no quick fix, um, it's more more than just ticking a box. And so uh, because it's something that requires continuous work um, in the practice of, of how we approach this, kind of uh, uh, highlighting the importance of continuous learning, continuous reflection, but also flexibility, um, because it's not going to be one size fits all. There are going to be mistakes and there are going to be sort of changes that need to happen. Um, and so that was the bulk of our conversation, finding sort of that intersection uh, between the two. Right, and uh, yep, that. so thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, Barbara, are you running the exit survey? Yeah, so no, I think Megan is, so it should be popping up on people's screens now. So we have just two questions uh, for you before we let you go. Um, we would really appreciate it uh, if you could answer them once they pop up on your screen. I'm sorry, we are having a little bit of technical issue. So I'm not seeing the poll. It's saying that I'm not um, into the right, uh, I'm not log, uh, logging as the right person. So let me try and, and uh, oh, I just someone it. is, okay, perfect. Thank you. So while we do that, um, maybe so please everyone take the time to fill out that we really need it for our reporting <laughs> and to show some of the awesome work that has been done uh in the past two days um i think it's important to know what to expect from the team uh for then after this so uh we'll be resending the links to the documents uh we'll be sending the slides in French and English for each session, and you'll have access to those. Uh, we'll be sharing any and every resource that we have shared over the past few days or anything that came up in the conversations that we were having. And we are also encouraging you to sign up for both our newsletters. So Digna has a newsletter uh, that comes out, I think, every two weeks, three weeks? Every month. Every month. Sorry. And then um, the Arc Hub has a newsletter that comes out actually more on a need to come out basis because we don't want to be uh, flooding your inboxes unless we have to. Um, and also, please um, go on our websites and continue to support our work. Um, so Digna is digna.ca. And we are not digna.ca. We are a centre arc hub.ca. I will change that and update that and it should be in the chat as well. I'll bet you want to do the yes. other thank yous. Yes, and just before we let you go, we really just want to say thank you. A big thank you, first of all, to you, the participants um, throughout this conference, but also those folks of you who have stayed with us uh, both days, all of today, um, you've made it all the way down to the last session of the day. So thank you very much for coming to the conference. Thank you for sharing and, and listening and participating. And um, honestly, uh, uh, all of this work wouldn't have been possible without you. Uh, 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 and so thank you. Um, we also want to thank Corporation Canada and the Corporation Canada staff. So uh, Mark, Melanie, Gabrielle, Olga, Shannon, Kate, um, thank you all. Uh, they've uh, 
been helping us uh, behind the scenes throughout all of these sessions and um, they were really instrumental in making sure everything moved smoothly in our sessions. Um, thank you to our interpreters Wendy and Oud who have made it possible for us to offer our sessions in French and in English and increase our accessibility. Um, you can imagine how hard it is to kind of uh, uh, interpret on the on the go and as we're changing things up. So thank you. As always, um, thank you to Gabriel Dubé, who is actually the GAC uh, program liaison for both um, the ARC Hub and Digna. Uh, Gabriel has been a great support to us and to the program um, throughout our time here. Um, a larger thank you to uh, uh, Global Affairs Canada, really. Um, without their support, none of this work would have been possible. Um, they, they fund our work, they make sure we're able to offer the trainings and the resources that we are. Um, of course, thank you to Corporation Canada, which houses our programs um, and hosts the work that we do. Um, thank you to all of our speakers for the past two days. Um, they've really enhanced uh, our sessions and uh, thank you for sharing uh, you know, their brilliant insights and for coming into our space and being uh, open and and, and uh, reflective with the uh, participants. Um, and thank you uh, to also Josephine, uh, uh, Josephine Basunda, who is uh, with Mubuntu Counseling. Josephine was the main psychosocial support that we had for the two days of the conference. Um, so uh, thanks to her, we were, offer, we were able to offer that service uh, to uh, all of the participants throughout. And finally, um, a thank you to my art colleagues. Um, and obviously without them, all of this, I would not have been able to do it by myself. So it really was a collaborative effort. We've worked really hard on this. We hope um, that there was a lot of learning and a lot of reflection that came out of it. And uh, thanks. And I think that's, that's it. Did I forget anyone? <laughs> You maybe forgot. Well, I'm going to thank you <laughs> for all your amazing work. And really, this has been a co-creation between our two teams. And I think we did something really interesting, fun, and hopefully um, is only the beginning of uh, continued uh, collaboration. And um, thinking of these two things as complementary. And with that... Uh, you are free to go. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Hope you have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Merci. Hi, everyone. Merci. Hi, everyone. Merci, tout le monde. Thank you. Thank you. I just came. <laughs> no, no problem. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Okay. I'll send the uh, feedback now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Let me see. Thank you. Merci depuis le Congo. Merci depuis le Congo. Uh, merci. <laughs> Thank you from Congo. Thank you from Congo. Merci, Kashindi. Pat, are you still filling out the survey? Because I don't want to end the meeting if you still are. Oh, we can't hear you. I'm just... Are you good? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so okay. much for being here and for participating in our conference. Yes, it was and... great. Thank you yes. so much. Thanks, Pat, and you've been all the way through to the